Welcome to episode 4 of the Summer Sculpting series. Today we're going to talk about how to actually use a workout programme to reach your goals, whether you're trying to lose body fat or whether you're trying to build muscle mass or just reshape your body overall. This is how we do it. I have never had this much hair in my life. Like, I just feel like there's so much hair on my head. I spoke about this in Instagram stories yesterday because my hair health is finally restored. Um, I was on a hair journey for a while. That's not what this video is about. Um, you can check out my evening routine. I think I spoke about it in there if you want to see how we fixed this situation. But um, hi guys, welcome to Summer Sculpt episode four where I am going to talk about now what my goal is and how if you're trying to get the same goal how we're going to do it how we're going to do it so we're going to try and keep it short and snappy because i filmed this already and it was 15 minutes long and it doesn't need to be 15 minutes long so we're going to get to the point number one my fitness journey is at the stage now where i was in my kind of prime shape all the rest of it for um in the in 20 end of 2022 start of 2023 and um, then obviously I was pregnant had a baby had three months off and now I've been back at the gym for four months now those four months the first couple of months like first one to two months trying to get strength back trying to just get like everything back in the flow because quite honestly going from pregnancy to three months off to then just you don't just walk back in you don't just stroll on back in like hey everybody and um, it's it's a bit of a journey but it actually does come back fairly quickly so I feel like I'm at the point in my fitness journey now where I'm feeling good I'm feeling good and the strength is there not fully there but it's there um, and it's time to challenge yourselves which is what we've been doing with this challenge so far this summer sculpt series so I want to talk about weight gain and weight loss and when the number on the scale actually should be something that you are looking at so I lost obviously some muscle mass after having a baby and we've now lost like the kind of excess body fat so I'm at the stage now where I'm leaner again but with less body fat it's already less muscle mass so we're kind of just looking a bit flat we're just a bit flat, which I've said before. The goal is to sculpt the body, build the body. You know, I really want to get the shoulders going, the back going, the legs, get some legs and some glutes um, and really just, you know, feel confident and strong and just, yeah, feel good in myself. Um, so I actually weighed myself not too long ago and I am currently the lightest I have ever weighed not ever weighed, but the lightest I have weighed in years. And as a result, that made me want to talk about this because I'm the lightest on the scale that I've been in probably like three, four years, maybe three years, but I am the worst I've looked, i.e. this is not my preferred shape that I'm in whatsoever. I just feel flat. I feel small. I feel slightly weaker than I should be. Um, and along with that, I'm also the lightest on the scale. So we're going to talk about that. I am on a journey to build some serious muscle mass, to shake my body. And what's going to come with that is weight. I am going to gain weight. Ideally, I'm not going to say what my weight is because I never want people to like compare, but I ideally over the next like three to six months want to gain anywhere between five and 10 kilo, which sounds like a lot, but we've lost a lot. So we've got a lot to play with. Um, and I think it's so important because if you look at what my weight was before I had the baby and what my physique looked like versus what my weight is now and what my physique looks like, you would definitely, well, I personally preferred what I looked like before. And it's not that I'm trying to get back there, it's that I want to build muscle again. Um, and that kind of, kind of flows into the conversation of if you are on some kind of journey, the scale alone should not be the only way that you track your progress. You need to look at the mirror. You need to see how your clothes fit. You need to see how you actually feel. You need to see how you're training in the gym, all that kind of stuff. So if you are someone that maybe has a lot of body fat to lose, if you are overweight, if you think actually I am needing to lose general weight as well as, you know, 
body fat and building muscle then obviously the number on your scale is going to change and a decrease but if you're someone that's maybe at the stage that I'm at where you're kind of slimmer or you only had like a small bit of body fat to lose but you're actually wanting to shape your body and like um what's the word I'm looking for recomp like recomposition your body shape you're probably either going to stay the same weight or put on a little bit of weight now this throws people off all the time on their fitness journeys because they think that okay I've joined this app for example and I'm doing this program and I want to get like lean and toned and get some muscles and blah blah blah, blah but they don't realize that actually putting on muscle mass you're putting on to your body so obviously the weight is going to go on as well even if you lose a bit of body fat you are going to put on a bit of weight on the scale but you will look so different you will feel so different your clothes will look and feel different um, and that's why i'm saying you have to look at other factors as well um so if you are someone that is let's let's take the two things here because i think what confuses a lot of people is how does my training change based on if i'm trying to lose fat or gain weight or gain muscle um and the answer is it doesn't really so if you are on a journey let's take my workout guide for example if you download my app and you're doing the summer scalp challenge and you are downloading the program and you see there's four workouts per week for the gym and also four workouts per week for the home but say you're doing the gym challenge and you think well my goal is to lose a bit of body fat then your workouts will stay the same so the workouts for this challenge because of the instagram responses we got the demand was for two lower body days one upper body day and then a cardio and abs day the focus everybody wants on the glutes everybody wants to focus on the glutes so it's a lower body focus program and we've got some abs in there we've got some cardio in there and we've also got the upper body day as well so everything is in there but if you take that plan for example and we're going to do, try and do two things on the screen here let's see how my editing skills work if your goal is to cut weight then you're going to do the challenge as is plus some additional cardio and your calories are going to be in a deficit you're going to keep your protein high which all our recipes are on the app, they're all high protein. The meal plan's set at a minimum of 100 grams of protein a day. Obviously there's options to switch things out, change it up, add in protein shakes, blah, 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 blah. If your goal is to build muscle mass or recomposition your body, you're gonna be on this side and you're going to follow the workout plan as is. You're not needing to add in any additional cardio for training purposes. If you do like to go a walk for fresh air or mental health, that's completely different. But you're not doing anything crazy or intense or having a step goal or anything like that. You're going to follow the workout plan as is. You're going to eat to your maintenance calories if you're trying to just kind of recomposition. But if you're trying to build some lean muscle mass, you're going to add a calorie surplus. Now, Whichever direction you are going, surplus or deficit in your calories, start off slow because you want to start off with an extra 200 calories a day or less 200 calories a day. Start there and follow it for two, three weeks. If you don't see the changes in the direction you want to be going, then you add on another 100 calories or you take off another 100 calories. And we do it like that because if you go too fast too soon, too fast too soon you have nowhere else to go you know you plateau say you say you plateau say you you drop 500 calories right away you know on your on your calorie deficit um and then you know it works for two weeks but then all of a sudden it's stagnant but you're going to drop another 100 calories and then another and another and before you know it you're you're not even eating anything and that's so damaging so you need to do small increments because if you do get to a point where you plateau and you need to change it up you need to have somewhere to go so i hope that makes sense I will say what I'm doing. So personally, I'm going to be doing the four workouts per week. And with that, I'm also doing no additional cardio other than what I said, like mental health walks, just out for fresh air. Cause I like to take Blake out in the pram or in the carrier um, on the days I don't go to the gym and just like for like half an hour. And we just walk around. Normally she falls asleep. We just get some fresh air, we look around, but it's not training, it's not intense. I don't have a step goal, nothing like that. Um, because my goal is to be building muscle mass. With that being said, on top of that, my calories right now are high. And they are, I know what my calories need to be for me. Um, I do need more than an extra 200 calories a day. I'm also breastfeeding. So it's up there again, you know, it's up, it's up, it's up. Um, I'm breastfeeding, um, like, six times a day and then two times during the night 
um, we are obviously training four times a week and that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot on your body. Um, so for me, my calories are definitely higher than say someone who's not breastfeeding or someone who maybe doesn't quite have the background that I have. So maybe your metabolism isn't the same as mine or your genetics aren't the same as mine or anything like that. With that being said, that lovely word genetics. If you are someone that stores your body fat genetically in your midsection, it will be harder for you to see abs versus someone who does not genetically store their body fat in their midsection. So for me, I naturally store my body fat kind of bum and legs um, and not really in my core. So for me to have abs, my body fat doesn't actually need to be too low. Whereas someone who maybe does store their body fat in their stomach but doesn't really on their arms and legs, they're going to need to be a lower body fat percentage than me to be able to see their abs. So keep that in mind. It's not all about abs, it's about being strong, healthy, confident, fittest, best version that you can be, whatever that is for you, like find where, where your happy medium is or where it is you're trying to go and stick with it. So with that being said, I'm going to make a few snacks this, this day, <laughs> this day, I'm going to make a few snacks today, they're going to be a few little kind of treat ones because it's Easter time coming up, but I also want to share one or two like high protein snack ideas or recipe ideas because no matter what your goal is, if it's fat loss or muscle gain, you need to be hitting protein. If you're trying to lose body fat, you need the protein to reserve the muscle mass you do have. You need it to keep you full, keep you satisfied and not be like feeling hungry on a deficit. And then if you are trying to gain weight, obviously you need the protein to build the muscle mass, to repair your workout sessions. Um, so yeah, that is where we're at. High protein, always. There's not much differences whether you're trying to cut weight or trying to bulk up. It's just small tweaks, either side, and they're diet related. With that being said, with that being said, the challenge will be coming out on my app in about two weeks time. If you are interested in joining it, it's going to be it's, going to be, it's a good one. I mean, it's, I think it's going to be. It is a good one. It's ready. It's getting launched soon. It's all just getting plugged into the app and getting reviewed and things. Um, I am also going to be doing, I said this in one of my videos, but I'll talk about it on Instagram. I'm going to be selecting two girls. Two girls that really want one-to-one. -one. They want me there every day. They want to have calls. They want to chat. They want everything personalised, customised. They need to know exactly what they're doing. I'm trialling it out. I'm going to pick two girls to do this with. Um, uh, I'll put all the information on my Instagram story, so keep an eye out for that. I'll announce it next week. Um, there's also going to be a Slack channel, i.e. a web chat room, so you can talk in it every day. There's going to be different kind of forums and things. We do have a Facebook group, but I think Facebook's dead. Who uses Facebook? not anyone that I know so there is going to be a lot of support on there daily support um if that's what you need if you're trying to build a bum if you're trying to get some abs trying to get fitter happier healthier stronger whatever it is whatever it is let's do it together so if you guys are following me on tiktok you will have seen that yesterday I posted I went to Morrison's and I just posted a like a tiktok showing you simple swaps to hit your protein so nothing like crazy or like, oh, you have to have this protein shake or you need to do this, you need to do that. It's literally like swaps to the bread that you eat, the bagels you eat, the pasta you eat, what kind of milk you use, that kind of stuff for like tips and tricks just to really easily increase your protein without you overly thinking about it. So one of the things I got was the Warburton's Protein Thin Bagels. So it tells you on them they're vegan, vegetarian. Um, one bagel has eight grams of protein. So it literally says here like two are 16 grams of protein. So they're really thin ones, so you would eat two, um, like in a serving. Like they're just these wee skinny bagels. 16 grams of protein, so I'm gonna toast these. I'm gonna do barbecue tofu, some lettuce, maybe some, I don't really know what else, but we're just gonna make these toasted bagels and literally have like 30 grams of protein between this and tofu as a little lunch snack. This is giving me breakfast sandwich vibes, but oh my god, it's so simple, so easy. Just barbecue tofu, lettuce, there's some butter on there. I was going to do sriracha sauce, but I changed my mind because I was going to do soup, but I've opted <laughs> against the soup. But how good do these look? <laughs> I'm actually going to 
spend the afternoon trialing out a few Easter recipes, but also like high protein snack ideas as well. So you guys should have seen my date bark, I'm sure. Oh, it was so good. And see like homemade protein balls and all these kind of things. They're right up my street. Oh, I think we'll make chocolate mousse. And I'm going to show you how to make a chocolate mousse with like four ingredients and it's literally made from silk and tofu. It does not sound appetizing, but trust me, it's like, it's, you would not know it's made of tofu. It just tastes like genuine chocolate mousse. Maybe we'll make an Easter chocolate mousse because I've got these chocolate eggs from, is it Moo Free that called? This brand here, I've eaten half of them right enough. I think we'll maybe actually just make a high protein chocolate mousse with some wee chocolate eggs on top um, for our dessert later on because it takes a wee while to set in the fridge but yeah. So whilst I wait on, uh, excuse me, whilst I am about to make that I'm going to actually have a snack. So I just had lunch about 20 minutes ago but I don't know if my period is true or not because see for the past week Adam actually commented on it yesterday, not in a bad way, right, he's all for food. Oh my God, is there sauce? Soup. Um, and he was like, you have been like OTT on the dessert train this last week. Like we bought apple strudels and there were two like separate kind of big long things. Said serve six, um, it served Steph because he didn't really like it. So he ate like a third of his and I wolfed mine down and I kept looking and I was like, are you not eating that? And he was like, no, pass it on over please. I will always eat leftover dessert. I will never leave dessert. <coughs> Excuse me. But I, so I am still breastfeeding, right? And Blake is going to be eight months next week. And I got a period last month. Like a regular period lasted five days and that was it. And I was like, oh, my periods must be back now that she is like, I think she must have been what, six months, six and a half months. Um, I thought this is just the time that I'm getting my period back whilst breastfeeding. This month, it has surpassed when it would have been here. However, the chocolate cravings and the dessert cravings have been unmatched. Plus, I've had cramp um, for a few days, but it should have been here like a week ago. No, we're not pregnant. Okay, we're not. I've assessed that situation. Um, but how did you get on your tummy? Look at you go. She hates tummy time. She rolls onto her stomach and then she instantly like regrets it and hates it. Um, but let me know, did you get a period whilst breastfeeding and then was it completely irregular and just came whenever it pleased? So side note, <laughs> the point in that clip was I'm also having a baked cookie along with a mint tea as a snack because the chocolate mousse takes a while to set in the fridge and that'll be dessert tonight. As usual I obviously like to make a lot of recipes but if you do want to take supplements and make life easier for yourself you know I always use my protein and my vegan supplements and the link to them is also in the description box and you will get an extra 5% off their website today if you use my code and um, the code is always on right enough so you're always saving some something um favorite protein right now and the one that's always my favorite is the soy protein isolate it's this one here in vanilla flavor it's actually just run out and i'm waiting on my delivery and i'm having panic attacks because i love it um but the new product they've come out with that is oh, i'm obsessed with um and i'm having this with dinner every single night now is the new clear protein super blend in peach tea this tastes like ice tea and it's made from upcycled barley and there's 18 grams of protein in the serving so definitely check it out i actually do think the peach tea flavor is sold out but they also have it in strawberry and that is equally delicious but thank you guys so much for watching make sure you are keeping your eye out for the summer sculpt challenge lunch date i'm thinking it's going to be the second week in april it's very very soon so two weeks time thank you for watching and i'll see you soon